Initially hesitant to expose her life, the project was put on hold for several months. However, the persistent knocking in her heart grew too loud to ignore, compelling her to embark on this journey. Writing amidst the challenges of a rebellious lifestyle, Karen sought prayer, fasting, a guidance from mentors to complete the book in just three months. Having never finished high school, a journey as a teenage mom led to isolation from her family, forcing her to navigate life alone. Battling numerous adversities, including addiction and abuse, she found consolation solely in a wavering faith in Jesus Christ. Despite moments of darkness and rejection from both the world and the church, she clung to her faith, believing herself unwanted due to the deliberate choices in the adult industry. Thoughts of suicide play car. Then, a transformative encounter with the Most High altered her perspective, surrendering her life to Jesus, acknowledging her inability to preserve it, she embraced a new part, understanding that transformation would be a continuous process. Her journey is ongoing with daily transformation as she strives to die to the self-life and passions of the flesh. Through her stories, she hopes others will find the same hope in Jesus that became her anchor. It became her Lord and Savior, providing comfort and friendship when everyone else had abandoned her. Karen's message resonates with unwavering belief that the same hope, salvation, and restoration she experienced can be extended to others in need as well. And on today's episode of Auto Interview, it's my utmost and awesome pleasure to have on the show today, Karen Suter. Welcome on the show, Karen. Thank you so much for having me, Peter. That's such a warm welcome. And thank you for saying such nice things about Bloodbot. Yeah, it's my pleasure as well. I'm excited to have you on the show today. Yeah, so Karen, I want to first say that you have such an interesting and captivating, compelling story in your book, Blood Broth, which I found the description of it to be extremely absorbing. And I must commend you for, you know, overcoming the shame to have put this book out. Now, I would like to ask you, what are you trying to achieve by writing Blood both. Trying to achieve to, to draw the <clears throat> narrative for a deep uh, personal journey. You know, this book goes into highs and lows and a lot of uh, depths. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to first and foremost overcome shame and adversity, you know, and hoping that it may resonate and inspire others facing the similar struggles. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the things that I talk about in the book are things that we tuck under the rug, but we never let it resurface. We think healing is just, oh, just let it go, put it under the rug, mm -hmm. and uh, it's over with, it's done. You know, but really going back and defining upsetting or traumatic experiences um, and also creating a platform for this type of dialogue and an understanding about the issues explored in this book to foster empathy and compassion mm. all the way through so <clears throat> you know it's very rocky the book but it does harness to those areas you know and I think it's there's not a lot of platforms that can discuss these things. Mm. And, um, you know, I feel like a lot of times the church turns their face towards it because they don't understand it or it might be mm. too heavy to digest or it's not holy. Mm. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about these things are real issues that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Mm. And uh, I bring it up. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to do too I want to win souls by it. You know, I want to captivate that. Um, we're using the appearance for a God magnet and no longer for a guy magnet, you mm. know, making that important and a, just a straight servitude uh, for the Lord and what he's done for me in my life. Mm. So I just wanted to get the book us and just honor, yeah. honor by it. And it was there. So that, that was the whole point. Well, that's such an amazing to, thing to do. And knowing that you're even trying to win souls with a story is another impressive goal yeah. and mission you've got yeah. there. That's amazing. I love yeah. the send of it. 
Now, for readers who haven't read the book yet, and of course, without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we'd expect picking up blood both? Uh, yes. Well, without giving too much away about the book, um, it offers readers a gripping narrative that delves into complexities of human experience. You know, mm -hmm. it's a journey of self-discovery, redemption, the power of resilience. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. It's very emotional. Um, I talk about themes of love, forgiveness, and the pursuit of healing. I also uh, talk about deliberate sin and the repercussions of it. And, uh, you know, as long there, there, there's goods, you know, but there's diving into uh, topics such as abuse, self-harm, harm, uh, suicide, miscarriage, abortion, mm. um, and of course, wow. sex industry. Um, I also talk about... Um, pros and the cons with it but it's also filled with scripture there's scripture all throughout the book mm -hmm. because that that was my 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 tool right that was my foundation so even though i was going through all of these things i still use a lot of scripture in there because that was something that held me held me ground to my morals and you know my mm -hmm. belief system so i incorporate that what god has to say about sex and what God has to say about all that versus how we define it as a society, you know. So this, without giving too, too much away, I know it's, <laughs> I just spilled the beans quite a bit, but it's, it's all in there. I cover a lot of uncomfortable area. Yeah. You know, even mere reading to the description page of the book on Amazon and other platform, one can easily tell that it's such a pulling, emotional and engrossing story. And I watched yeah. a couple of your interviews on a particular platform, which was quite very awesome as well. Very emotional and such an amazing story. Even for you to have come out to share the story, to write about it, it's another bravery. Yeah, it's, it shows how courageous yeah. you are, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, that, that was one of the struggles too, is mm. um, coming out about it. You know, I didn't really want to, but the Lord kept pressing me to be um, vocal about it. That's great. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. sharing. Now, mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated about how authors, especially novelists like yourself, craft long sentences and brings works together in a way that it eventually makes a great novel. You know, these always leave me thinking about how exactly they got their ideas and inspiration. Now, as far as writing is concerned, I too would love to ask you, how do you get your inspiration and ideas? Where did it come from? I had to laugh when you asked me this question because the truth to that is I got my ideas from the trauma. Mm, you know, wow. the, 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 the trauma, it wasn't really an idea. It was more of this is what happened. You know, it was, <clears throat> how do I write something where I don't, it's not too much or it's not too little. And I, I was just explain it how it is, you know? Mm. So I got my ideas from the trauma, you know, crafting mm. long sentences and bringing words together. Sure. It's indeed a, a fascinating process, but the inf inspiration it comes from personal experiences. Mm. It comes from observations of mm. the world around me. And more importantly, it, it, it comes from others. You know, when you think you have a story, there's, there's somebody else out there that's got more of an intense story, you know? Mm. So I, I feel like when I was working, most of the girls in the industry were my inspiration. And I do mm. write that out in my acknowledgments that... Uh, mm. They, they definitely were. So my inspiration was just the trauma, to be honest with you. I had to put pen uh, and pad together and make it make it come to life again. <laughs> yeah, that's such an amazing one, really. And I love the fact that, you know, you're inspired based on the trauma. And I think that's one yeah. of the things about writing. When a writing comes from a place of a solid section, when a writing comes 
from a very you know strong force or something inspired it from your heart it makes it to read totally. exceptionally and you know read totally. in an engrossing manner you know such kind of writing are always heavily put together i i can yes. I relate to that Sometimes a, a fleeting moment or an image um, can mm. spark an entire novel, yeah. right? So it just takes one one certain thing that goes, you know what? There's a story behind this. I got to captivate the audience, you know? Some, and, and my best ideas often come when I allow myself to fast and pray, you know, wow. and then allow the Lord to lead. Because mm. if it's my own verbiage or something like that, it might... Uh, not always the best right mm. so fasting and praying getting my ideas that way peter well wow, that's amazing that's really amazing now i know that writing this book must have been a bit tasky for you and i would like to ask if you experience any challenges in the place of writing the book if there is any could you share with us what challenge it is and how you ultimately overcame it also how do you feel during the time of putting these words together Considering the experiences you've had, does writing this book bring back some memories of sort? Does it also leave you with some emotional state? Would you love to talk about that? Yeah, without getting emotional talking about <laughs> it again. But yeah, <laughs> um, all, all jokes aside, though, you know, um, challenges. I could I could write another book based on the challenges from bringing this book out. Um, let's just say. Th- spiritual warfare from the beginning you Mm. know for for bringing this out um first and foremost again was the judgment of others right being nervous about coming forward and um the controversy uh based on it so that was probably the first obstacle to say you know what i'm a new creation i'm forgiven i don't care what people say Mm. everybody has a past it's where i'm going not where i've been Right. So that was definitely one of the first challenges. Another one, um, I'm not going to throw her onto the bus publicly like this, but my first publishing company, <clears throat> she, um, she, it was 7,000 American and I never got a book out of it. Mm. So that was um, my second challenge. I waited about nine months for this project to come through and nothing came about it. So I was, mm. I was hopeless on the ride you know depending where I put all my eggs in one basket Mm. and um that that kind of wasn't uh you know it it just wasn't in God's plan at the end of the day you know everything has its timing and it just wasn't but that definitely was a challenge for me Mm. um the conviction the conviction was pounding while writing this book um because I was in industry while I was writing it Oh. And uh, yeah, yeah. So that was really, really heavy, you know, um, re- revisiting uh, difficult moments from my past. Of course, the emotional weight of those experiences was very palpable uh, mm. during the writing process, you know. But however, um, I believe that confronting these challenges, you know, head on was a crucial, uh, was very crucial for the authenticity of the narrative. Absolutely. Um, to overcome these emotional whole hurdles, you know, I did uh, seek support of a few loved ones and um, engaged again in a lot of prayer and fasting. Um, you know, the trauma part of it, dealing back and going through stuff, that was mm. really heavy because I had tucked all of this stuff underneath the rug for years uh-huh. and thought, because I was so busy, I was caught up in the rat race in fight or flight mode. I didn't have time to rest nor think. So I was constantly in a state of trauma. So wow. when I was writing this book and I, I had to sit down and reread a, a paragraph over and over and over again, I gave up on Kleenex. I had the paper picker rubber, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and drying all my tears. And it was, mm. it, it, it was actually a, a healing process that wow. I'm glad I went through, you know, the trauma. But God is the Alpha and the Omega. He went back with me while mm. writing and he worked in my heart and he worked out all of that pain, right? So I'm able to talk about it. Sure, I tear a little bit, but I tear because of the goodness of God. I don't tear because of the trauma anymore because it's gone. But I tear up because he's just so good. 
So, <clears throat> you know, the prayer and the agony went into this book, but I found healing while writing. So it was a slow mm. process, Peter. You know, there was a lot of buried dirt, but I'm glad we we put it all together in 328 pages. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's quite amazing, really. You know, I particularly love your answers to these questions. And the description of your book sounds very pulling to me. And again, I think it would help other people who has been through similar experiences because there are quite a lot of people who have gone through something like that and they won't be able to talk about it, even to write about it. But the fact that you have someone who could come up, write about it and share their own story would find it would be very therapeutic, really. That's such an amazing, yeah, such an amazing thing to do. So I would love to commend you for it. Thank you for sharing. Apart from blood both, do you have any other works you've altered or maybe currently working on? Currently, no. Um, blood bought is my main focus right now. Uh, it's my baby. Um, I definitely one day will branch out to a nonprofit. Um, it has a lot of potential. Who knows? Maybe a film yeah. one day. Who knows? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I will uh, eventually bring awareness on the subject of sexual sin. That is my goal. And I wow. will go wherever I'm called to testify. Beautiful. So that is what is in the midst right now for Bloodbot. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I'm so excited about it and I hope it goes successfully. Yeah. So Amen. also, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published <laughs> author like yourself? Are there any challenges you've encountered ever since you got published? Oh, since I got published? Um it's been a decent ride since I've been published, you know, the publishing is a multi-faced journey and challenges are definitely part of the process. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, navigating the industry to marketing, to reaching a wider audience. Um, each step has its own hurdles, right? Yeah. So I would say uh, find a supportive network. Uh, mm. Do your research. Persistence is key. You got to be so persistent, yeah. um, especially if God gave you the vision for it. You know, there's going to definitely be a lot of hurdles. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be, yeah. oh, my gosh, you name it. But persistence, you know, when God gives you a vision, you got to ride it out. Because if you don't do it, someone else is going to take it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, someone else is going to take the buckhorn and uh so I, I would say just stay true to your voice, you know, stay true to your voice and be very leery on who you're going to trust because a lot of people just want your money mm. and they won't produce a book from it. So Absolutely. I would say make sure that the publisher is in arm's reach, you know, drivable where you can, you know, knock on their door if anything need be, right? So yeah. that is definite. Um, and And I would say, you know, just right now, I'm just learning that every opportunity is not from the Lord, mm. right? Mm. And and not to get super hyped about it because we can get really excited about a new project. But I've learned in, in the last year is just to be, be calm about it, right? So mm. don't get too hyped and letting my emotions um, guide my decisions, right? Mm. Wow. So it's my life testimony. So it's not to mm. be taken lightly, so... Wow, amazing. I love that last sentence. That's quite amazing to hear. That's quite amazing to hear. Now, Karen, is there anything that you would love to share with the viewers about your book that we did not mention in this interview and you'd love the viewers to know? I do. And I took time <clears throat> marinating on this answer and um, I prayed about it. So I just wanted to go back to what you said initially <clears throat> about overcoming shame. Mm. And <clears throat> I want to make note that our Lord Jesus was bled seven different times. And one of those times was when his beard was ripped out of his face. He mm. was bruised and beaten and he was spat on. And the Bible doesn't straight mention in the Gospels that they did rip out his beard. But when you study crucifixion, it was part of the humiliation process mm. where their beards would be ripped out amongst crucifixion. Mm. 
So just like how the Bible references in John, John 20, verse 25 says, unless I see in his hands the print of his nails, will I believe? Mm. So we knew that crucifixion happened for the hands and the nails. Yeah. So we have to also consider that ripping out the beard was also part customary of the humiliation process. Absolutely. So the yeah. fact that his beard was pulled out and that was one of the first things that Jesus bore for us on the cross I'm letting the audience know that your shame has already been dealt with. Mm. You are a new creation. Mm. The second thing that I want to um, make part on that is that the Bible does state that Jesus is at the right hand of the father right now. He's mm. up in heaven. He's there. We right now are the church. We here on earth are the church and he's coming back for us as a pure and spotless bride. So <clears throat> we still have spots, including myself, right? Mm. Um, to iron that out. And my message that I want to bring, bringing up the shame part and also talking about the church, the church needs to do better. The church needs to do better right now. There's so much gossip. There's so much shame right now with the church and in my experience the realest people are the ones who accepted me mm. in that done in the mire right mm. so they were the ones who accepted me um there was a lot of people who turned face right and they were supposed to be the representation of christ so doing better as a body the deliberate sin part Yes, we come as we are, but we're supposed to leave changed. And that's what makes faith so powerful. If we blend into the crowd and not uh, let Jesus shine through us, then mm. we're not really doing a good job as a body in the church. Absolutely. So Jesus already bore the change, the, the, the shame. Now we need to act appropriately so, because you never know what people are going through. Mm. The women in this industry, or some men in the industry, they don't, wake up in the morning and say, I want to be a prostitute. Mm -hmm. No little girl wakes up and says, this is what I want to do for my life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the situations in life that pushes people to do it or you're born into it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, this is how life is. And we're never supposed to pass judgment. That's not our job for the sinners, for the ones who are saved. Yes, there's righteous judgment, but the ones who are, are, are struggling in this, we, as a church, we need to help. We need to help. We need to be representatives. Mm -hmm. And you can only give what you've got. Yeah. So the self-examination part is key. We're supposed to mm. work out our own salvation and work it out here. So self-examination before we point fingers and go, oh, well, she done this. Has she done that? Yeah. You know, you know, so that is my message, brother, is uh, if I did want to say something that was put on my heart to to say Shame is already gone. Mm. So hold your head up high and love one another. Because if we do all these things, but there is no love, then it's just a bunch of noise, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> wow. I so much love your answers to these questions. And to me, this sounds very educative also. And like the father that you mentioned, you know, you know, we are not a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. So... That's amazing. It reminds me of the particular biblical verse. So thank you so much for sharing. I love it so much. Now, Karen, would you like to read a few paragraphs of your book? It can be your favorite line or a page if you would love to. I, I did. I did take out a very important part. So bear with me. I will read fast. Thank you for the opportunity, too. Where are we on the time? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're giggling all right <clears throat> so it starts on page 205 okay i profess to be a christian and a follower of christ and because i was blood-bought i knew the holy spirit was still in me however because i was deliberately sinning i was allowing open doors to harvest my soul ties that filled my temple with so much done mm. i was not used to having attachments in life and i found it easy to repel any negative energy. I knew the devil was having a field day watching me sin, talking rubbish in my ear until I believed the lies and completely lost all identity. 
He had to yell hard for me in my ear, but when he did, I accepted the enemy's speech and I did not dare open the written word of God. I had allowed the enemy to take complete force during this time of my life as I surrendered my soul to a slavery of sin. Mm. Just as much as the devil latched onto me, I also gave him legal right to access me by being lukewarm. Mm. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. How many times have you had the opportunity to talk to God as you picked up your phone or you wouldn't put it down? And the distraction got in the way. He said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Mm-hmm. I couldn't risk the failure and I wasn't ready to nail it to the cross. What about the money? Just a few more thousand. Just as much as the conviction is there, the spiritual warfare is also there. I must have been exhausting my angels over the battle of my mind and the enemy wants your mind. If he can get a hold of the most powerful human force, which is human personality and latch on to your identity, watch out. When I was working and doing those things, I was heavily convicted every minute. I would still talk to God here and there, but when I tried plugging in, I would just keep it simple. I would not complain and I would just give thanks instead of avoiding having a conversation of prayer. I would not allow God's word to minister to my heart and penetrate. I'm almost done, friend. Mm. My shame and guilt had me deep in the mire. I knew those low vibrations of shame and guilt prevented me from entering the presence of God or even believing I was worthy to. Please, Lord, I can't face you yet. I just need a little bit more money. Please Mm. have mercy on me, I beg. I didn't even know what I was asking then. I knew God had told me he wanted to be my provider, but I was afraid of going backwards financially. Meanwhile, the conviction was so strong, but it was done in the most loving way. God kept whispering, I love you. There's no greater love than me. Um, <clears throat> hmm. I was stuck loving the security money provided and I could not serve two masters. One master wanted my flesh and mind and the other wanted my sin and my heart. Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. Mammon means wealth regarded as an evil influence or false object of worship or devotion. It was clear I was devoting my idol worship to myself and my wealth. Mm. Deliberate sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I so much love this. From this small reading that that you've done, I I realized quite a lot of things contained in it. Firstly is a quest for money, which is one of the factors that keep pulling you into the act. Then there's another one. I love the emotion imbibed in your radio. And again, the understanding that, okay, I know that this thing I'm doing is not really worth it, but then I just want some little more time. You know, let, let's go. But God, please, could you see my heart? Then again, I love your world building. That's why the fact that this is it's a personal story. But then your world building, there's a particular line you read towards the ending that was like, oh, wow. When you talk about with your flesh or stuff, stuff like that, I, I caught that <laughs> word and I was like, that's an amazing word building because I, I so much love word building as a poet. And especially I love it when it's quite poetic, descriptive, yes. imaginative, able for you to be able to paint image in your head as a read along and also very illustrative. So, well, that's quite short. And I've said all of these things. What if I read the entire book? That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's heavy. I'm telling it's you. It's really. Heavy. It's, it's, you know, the, the first <laughs> The first, uh, I think, 10, 11, 12 chapters or something, wow. it's, it's, it's heavy, but wow. then it gets into the, 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 the good part. Wow. It gets into the good part, you know, of, of how God describes sin. And, and yes, one wants your flesh and your mind, and the other master wants your heart and your sin. Yeah, I think like, that's a like, point like, I said I particularly love, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's right on the fence, but... When you're on the fence, the devil still own the fence. Mm. 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 Wow. So, you know, the, 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 the lukewarm thing, it didn't work for me. Mm. It didn't work for me. So well, when you're sitting in your lukewarm, I don't know how it can work for you when you, 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 you're not changed. Mm. Well, That's all I'm going to say. 
That's yeah. all I have to say. It didn't work for me. So I know it's not working for people. Because if the Holy Spirit's still at work, that Absolutely. conviction's still there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing that you struggle with your sin. Mm. Wow. Well, this is very pulling, really. And I think we can even go on and on and on and on and on. It's very pulling and very emotional. Yeah, I I love the sound of it. And I'm liking the atmosphere (laughs) currently. Very intriguing. Now, Karen, as a published author, what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book? What would you advise people in this category? Peter, perseverance perseverance all the way through connect with other writers seek guidance from mentors be open to constructive criticism right and value your voice Mm. value what god's put on your heart or or your dream that's in front of you i mean haters are gonna hate haters are gonna hate all publicity is good publicity right so even if people have a, a a certain idea or thoughts about what you're doing just go through it because it doesn't matter it's your walk it's your journey just press through Mm. perseverance is key you know if god gave you that dream it's nobody else's business and don't be casting your 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 pearls to swine Mm. you know my mistake was i uh launched this last year thinking that my book was going to come out right i I briefly said my previous publisher she told me it was coming it never came so Mm. i had released everything i had put all of my ducks in one basket. So just keep it quiet. Keep it Mm -hmm. quiet until you're ready to execute it, you know, because haters Mm -hmm. are going to hate all the way through. So keep the vision. Persevere. Wow, that's quite amazing. And I like the fact that you particularly mentioned value your voice. It's very important for you to place a high value on your voice. It's it's really an amazing thing to say, really. I like the fact Mm -hmm. that you mentioned that. Karen, in case we have viewers who are currently watching this interview, I would like to get a copy of your book. On what platform is it available on for purchase? Sure. I have my own uh, blog site that I'm working on right now. As I continue to go on, there'll be more blogs. www.bloodbot.net. Uh, my hmm. book is on Amazon. It's on Apple Books. It's on Palace Marketplace. Uh, the viewers are more than welcome to add me on Facebook under Karen Suter. Yeah. And uh, a lot of my information, a lot of my posts that are there, um, you can go on uh, my page, friend me, and you can follow along as well. So yeah. there's Barnes & Noble as well. There's independent bookstores. My goodness, it's on ebooks. <laughs> I'm out there. It's out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I love that cover, really. It's very beautiful. Yeah, I I really, in describing the cover, I wanted a girl beaten, bruised, broken down, but also tied to materialism, Mm. you know, and her her mouth has got diamonds, her chains of materialism that are on there. And like I said, ripping out that beard, we are blood bought. So, Mm. you know, just because we we struggle with our sin doesn't mean that he hasn't given up on us. Mm. He'll 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 come for us. He'll Mm. come for us, especially if you blood bought. So thank you very much. My cover speaks volumes and I hope it uh, resonates with people who, you know, are are facing similar struggles. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I left a link in the discussion part of this interview where interested viewers can get a copy of Karen Suter's books directly on Amazon, on Barnes & Nobles, on Apple, and another platform where it's available on for Porsches. So thank you so much, Karen, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's awesome having this conversation with you, and thank you for coming on the show to talk about Blood Broth with me. Thank you so much for having me here. And thank you so much for enriching my journey. Yeah, it's my pleasure as well.